All right, so now we've got the idea of horizontal and vertical translations. All that means is we're going to be moving graphs left and right and up and down. All right, so to begin with, let's look at uh, f of x equals just a simple graph x squared. We all know what the graph of that looks like. It's one of our six basic functions we should know. Remember, it's a parabola and the vertex is down here at the origin and goes up like such. Okay, so there's a quick sketch. Remember, those six basic graphs, you should have, the six basic functions, you should have a, a basic idea of what their graphs look like immediately. All right, so now let's graph g of x. And let's let that be x squared plus three. Everybody know what's gonna happen with that? We're adding 3 to all of the y values on our original function, f, there. And so what that's going to do is it's going to take this entire graph, f of x, and move it up 3 units. So instead of this point down here being at the origin, it's going to be up here instead at 3. Every single point on the graph gets moved up 3 units. So there's g. Makes sense? All right, so by adding a constant there to uh, to our original function f, it takes our original graph and just moves it up. So what do you think if we did, what do you think would happen if we said x squared minus 3? So the graph of f of x, this parabola right here in black, would go down 3 units. So 1, 2, 3. Everything else is the same. It's a parabola. It's the same basic parabola, it's just been moved down three units. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so adding or subtracting a constant to our original function uh, just moves that graph, the original graph, either up or down. Okay, so we'll summarize all this up here in just a few minutes. Let's do a couple of more. Right, so now let's try, go back to our original function, f of x equals x squared. And I'm just choosing x squared here because uh, it's an easy function to graph. These concepts that we're talking about apply to all of the functions. All right, so again, this is our basic parabola. All right, so now let's graph g of x equals x minus 3 squared. What do you think is going to happen? If you have a graphing calculator, by all means, uh, push pause and, and uh, uh, graph it, see what happens. All right, so it moves this entire graph here to the right three units. One, two, three. So this becomes the spot. All right, so it's going to be like such. Right, so that x minus 3 inside, this is like inside our original function, it's being squared there, um, moved our original graph 3 units to the right. So what do you think is going to happen with h of x being x plus 3 squared? That's right, it's going to move it to the left, 3 units, 1, 2, 3. It's kind of counter to what we, intuitive to what we thought would happen. Right? But that's uh, that's what's happening. Okay, all right. So we've got moving things up and down and left and right. So let's summarize that up into the following: vertical and horizontal translations. Let C be some number greater than zero, some real number greater than zero. So if we know the graph of y equals f of x, doesn't matter what the graph is. I just use the parabola because it's easy to draw. But this applies to every single function. If we know the graph of some function, then if you take some constant number and add that to your original function, and then you get a new function, and all that's going to be is a vertical shift up of c units. That's like adding the x squared plus the 3. It moved everything up 3 units. If you subtract c units from our original function, then your new function is just going to be a vertical shift down of c units. All right? And then number 3 here, notice the difference between f of x and the minus c and f of x minus c. The x minus c here is inside our original function. We're evaluating our function at x minus c, whereas here we're just subtracting c from our original f of x. So this situation is going to be a horizontal shift to the right 
of C units, and then f of x plus C is a horizontal shift left of C units. Okay. All right. So let's try g of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2 minus 3. Now, the function here is the absolute value function. So remember what the graph of the absolute value of x looked like. That was that v-looking shape, right? It kind of went through like this, v-looking shape. So this is going to be similar, it looks like, because we're just moving things right and left. The x minus 2 here inside of the absolute value, that's going to end up translating or moving your graph which way? All right, it's going to move it to the right two units, one, two. So let's go one, two. All right, and then this minus three that's outside our function here, what do you think that's going to do to your graph? All right, that's going to move it down three units. So one, two, three. So our original function of the absolute value of x had that point, the sharp point, at the origin, zero, zero. Well, now the sharp point is moving two units to the right, but three units down. It's going to be right here. All right, and so then we just have our V-looking shape. And you can get more points. You can plot more points um, to, to be exact, you know, where things are going. When X is zero, the Y value is negative one, so we know it's going to go through there and whatnot. Um, but here I just want to get the general idea of, well, if we knew what the graph of absolute value of x is, which we're supposed to know, then the graph of x minus 2 minus 3 is just moving that graph, the absolute value function graph, just moving it two units to the right and three units down, and we can kind of get a s quick sketch of what it's supposed to be. That's the goal, right? We want to be able to have an idea of what these things are looking like before we ever set down pen on paper. All right, so that's it for horizontal and vertical translations. Uh, those are called rigid translations because the shape of the graph never changes. We're just moving it left and right. In the next video, they're going to be called non-rigid transformations. That's where we're going to get stretching and shrinking and reflecting of our graph. All right, so uh, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.